How is it possible Texas continues to struggle? Struggle? Str I'm struggling to walk today because I've got a mildly uh, pulled groin muscle. Texas is doing something a whole lot more than struggling. How is it possible Texas continues to struggle to send kids to the NFL? They have everything a powerhouse needs except culture. Mitch from Scottsdale, Arizona. Well, Mitch, you said a lot when you said except for culture. I need to have a word with some of you because some of you are in a couple of camps and you can't be in two camps at the same time. Okay, some of you out there are in the camp of, well, Texas has had all this talent and they still haven't done anything with it. True. I happen to be in that camp. Then some of you are in another camp and that is, well, anyone could win if you got the kind of talent that Nick Saban and Kirby Smart have. You can be in one of those camps. You cannot be in both of them. Do you, do you see the issue here? If you don't, you can't watch one program acquire tons of talent. I'll show you exactly how talented they've been in a second and watch them lack what Alabama and Georgia have and fall flat on their face. I mean, in spectacular fashion and then still look at Tuscaloosa and Athens and say, oh, anyone can do that. No, no, it's really hard. Even when you have all the best players, it's still not easy to do what those cats do. So let's be real. This has been a disaster. This has been an unmitigated disaster. How bad has it been? Here are the TVMA numbers to back it up. The Texas Longhorns, players drafted by year, starting in 2016, one. 2017, one. 2018, four. 2019, two. 2020, three. 2021, five. And a big fat goose egg for 2022. I had stats and info run the numbers. That is 16 total players drafted since 2016. Georgia, by comparison, just sent 15 in this draft alone. So that's where the two programs stand, respectively. It's not done. It gets even more violent. Texas had top five recruiting classes in 2018 and 2019. They had a top 10 class in 2020. That is the crop of players that we're essentially talking about here going undrafted. Seven other colleges had at least one player drafted. Now, I left one thing out there because I want to go back and reemphasize it. You heard me say seven other colleges had at least one player drafted. What I meant to say is seven other colleges in the state of Texas had at least one player drafted. It's the fourth time since 2014 with zero or one players being drafted. Uh, 1938, 2014, 2022, those are the years with the goose egg in the draft column. It kind of hurts to say this because like, I want Texas to be good. But there's only one way to fix this, and it's just to rip the Band-Aid off and to understand what the problems are. And lastly, but not leastly, if you really want me to just shove the dagger in a little bit further, these are programs with more draft picks than Texas this last year. Air Force, good for the Falcons. Fayetteville State, we had to look up the mascot, the Bronco, I believe. Uh, don't mess with them, though. Apparently Fordham, Kansas, Missouri State, Sanford, Southern Utah, Valdosta State, and Yale. We got to fix things in Austin. Hopefully Steve Sarkeesian is well on his way to doing that. But back to the question at hand, how is it possible with all that talent walking in the door? Well, it's the exact same as if you go buy all the groceries in the world, but then tear the start knob off your oven. It doesn't really matter what you have in the fridge. If you have no means to make the meal, you don't get the finished product. Everyone just goes hungry. So we've had all the groceries in the world, and we haven't had anyone out there capable of making the meal. And you may think to yourself, oh, sure, okay, metaphors notwithstanding, if you recruit at a certain level, you'll just accidentally put some kids in the draft, won't you? No, no. I'll, I'll be at the airport early in the morning, for example. And if I get on that airplane, it doesn't matter if all 180 seats are filled. If the pilot doesn't show up, if someone doesn't show up capable of getting that thing off the ground, you don't just look around the cabin and say, okay, the pilot's not here, but like, it's, how hard can it be? You got wings on this thing. You just hit the gas, you pull the stick back, plane takes off. Nope, nope, it really is that difficult. Even with everything else in place, you've got to have the culture. You've got to have structure, first off, and you got to have development. And if you don't have them, it can be this disastrous. It really can. So if you can, if you can believe it, yeah, Texas just went over in the draft. But I do think about this a lot. When I see stuff like this happen, I don't think this, I mean, this is obviously going to be rectified to some extent starting next year. So I, I kid around a little bit. I don't like Texas in this state. But 
You know, there are a lot of folks out there who say it doesn't matter where you commit to out of high school because if you can play, the NFL will find you. And I've always thought that is the biggest load of BS anyone could ever feed you. Oh, it's true that if your raw talent and God-given ability is at a certain level, the NFL probably will find you. It makes all the difference in the world where you go to college because it makes all the difference in the world where you go in terms of the folks who have your fate in their hands. There's a lot you don't control. You don't ultimately control everything about your development and placement and utilization. There's a lot about the culture of a college football program you need to be right that is beyond your ability to control. It matters a lot. So you may, you may have five-star talent, and then we got an A-B scenario here. You go to program A, you end up being a first-round draft pick. You go to program B, you end up being a, a borderline seventh-round draft pick. Okay, well, the NFL found you in both instances. You were right. Like, you made life-changing money down path A. Hopefully, you get to your second contract and make life-changing money down path B. It makes all the difference in the world. So what are we saying here? Are we saying that all these kids that just went to Texas – with a lot of stars next to their name and a lot of other major programs wanted them, they go undrafted. You tell me, oh, they just would have been undrafted no matter where they went. No, they wouldn't. Some of them maybe, not all of them. They went to the wrong program. As it turns out, Texas was not equipped to develop them. I'm not speaking about Texas today moving forward. I'm speaking about Texas in the rearview mirror. So it takes more than just you. Unless you are a transcendently great player, it takes more than just you. So be very careful and use the right criteria when you're choosing that college destination. If you want to commit, by the way, on the program, we'll be happy to have you.